but people need to understand that this is real this is possible this is science and therefore i don't talk if uh if mortality is possible but when it will be possible for us, for complete human bodies. And this is the purpose of science and technology. And this is what is going to happen in the next two decades. Welcome to the Seam Lund podcast. I'm your host, Seam Lund. And today our guest is Dr. Jose Luis Corderio. He's an engineer, economist, futurist and transhumanist from Spain. Jose works with people like Peter Diamandis and Ray Kurzweil to promote the science and application of life extension. His new book, The Death of Death, talks about when can we expect to treat aging and extend human lifespan. This episode is brought to you by the Metabolic Autophagy Masterclass. It is the most comprehensive and in-depth program about applying the benefits of intermittent fasting and metabolic flexibility for both longevity and body composition. You get access to over 13 hours of video content about the science of autophagy as well as a four-week meal plan and workout routine with precise macros and food recommendations. Head over to seamlund.com forward slash masterclass in one word and use the code POD20 for a sweet 20% discount. Jose, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Sim. Happy to be here with you. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, get, glad, I'm glad to speak with you again. And we first met at the Biohacker Summit, uh, where you gave like a really exciting and uh, like a very interesting uh, speech about the death of death of how humans and how our entire species can like you know fix aging or um, yeah improve our just overall uh, lifespans. Yes, and I am working on that internationally, based from Madrid. Uh, and obviously promoting these ideas in Spanish, but also in some other uh, languages. I also speak Portuguese, so my book came out in Portuguese, and then in French, now it's coming out in Russian, and soon in Chinese, so I am very excited in Chinese. Mm, yeah, that's pretty, <laughs> sounds really good, and kind of glad to hear that it kind of spreads across the, the world, so this is kind of a message. Um, but before we get into like the book, and you were born like in Venezuela, actually, and um, or not, sorry, you were born in Spain, but you went to Venezuela. So can you maybe like talk a little bit about your like backstory and uh, like where about you at the moment? Uh, yes, actually, uh, my family emigrated from Spain to Venezuela during the dictatorship of Francisco Franco, who was a fascist di di dictator. And um, so I grew up in Venezuela. Then I studied in the USA. I went to the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. So I lived in the East Coast and then also on the West Coast. I was one of the founding faculty of Singularity University in the year 2009 with two other MIT colleagues. Peter Diamandis and Ray Kurzweil. And then I stayed uh, in California several years. And from California, I moved to Madrid, where I currently live, and where I want to take all of these ideas of the singularity, immortality, transhumanism into the Spanish speaking world, and also all over Europe, um, the world, and outside planet Earth as well. I plan mm -hmm. to go to the moon and I plan to go to Mars whenever we can travel there cheaply and safely. Mm. <laughs> well, yeah, looking forward to that. Uh, but, uh, but you have like actually a background in like economics. Uh, so what, what made you make the shift from uh, that into like longevity and uh, aging? Uh, at MIT, I studied engineering and economics. So I have like a dual major and I also took languages. That is also why I speak uh, French, Portuguese, and I understand uh, German and Italian. Uh, so I have been in many areas, in uh, many places, uh, through many different time periods. Uh, in the last five years, I have been devoting basically most of my time into anti-aging. Uh, also because um, my father died, so when you have someone who dies in your family, things change radically, uh, like obviously in my case. So after he died, I, beca I became more and more involved in rejuvenation technologies. Also because they were becoming really possible. It was not possible to talk about this, you know, 20 years ago uh, or even 10 years ago, but this is moving exponentially faster and we have a new development basically every month, every week, every day in the anti-aging field. So that is why I'm working on this now and why I wrote my book and uh, why it is coming out soon in many other languages. Hmm. Yeah, sorry to hear about your father. Like, uh, did he die away from like natural causes or um, did he have some disease? 
Well, aging uh, is a disease. So to me, aging is the major disease, the mother of all diseases. And there are no natural causes. What, what is natural cause? It is natural that a tiger eats you. That is natural, but you don't want the tiger to eat you. Or cancer is natural, but you don't want cancer. And aging is natural in a way, but you don't want uh, aging. So anyway, my view, which is becoming more and more common, I think, is that aging is a disease, but it is a curable disease. And we are very close to curing aging. We talk between two to three decades, we should be able not just to cure, but to reverse aging, because the objective is rejuvenation technologies, to become younger, not to become older. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it is a big, like a paradigm shift for, let's say, a lot of people that uh, do not think about aging as, um, yeah, something that happens, but as like almost like a disease, because uh, like you said, like it is like the mother of all diseases, like as you get older, uh, then the risk of all these other comor comorbidities increases as well, like cancer, heart disease, uh, neurodegeneration, all those things happen as a byproduct of aging, so to say, and younger people are at the less risk of uh, developing those diseases, whereas the older you get, the, uh, you know, like biologically, the older you get, uh, then, uh, then those uh, risks also increase. And so there is uh, like a difference between your, uh, you know, chronological age, as well as the biological age. So like everyone is like a different age, uh, in, biologically, even though they may be born at the same year, and, you know, being alive at the, for the same amount of time. Uh, yes, but we are also discovering many things which most people don't know. For example, there are biological uh, cells uh, or animals that are immortal, that they are biologically immortal. For example, cancer cells, they do not age. Cancer cells are mutant cells, somatic cells that mutated and became immortal. And this was actually discovered in 1951 a long, long time ago, seven decades ago, 1951, and most people don't know it. But so cancer cells are biologically immortal. They stop aging process. They don't age. They could live forever. And that is why they are called biologically immortal. Uh, that does not mean that they don't die, because if you kill them, they die, mm. but they do not age. Right. But not only cancer cells are biologically immortal, germ cells, and you have germ cells. Germ cells in men, they make a sperm, a spermatozoids, and in women, they make eggs. Germ cells do not age. They can also live indefinitely forever. Also, there are small organisms like uh, hydras, immortal jellyfish, and other small organisms that could live indefinitely forever. Mm. And even more interesting, bacteria. Bacteria that are the first life forms in the planet and um, that divide symmetrically. They have uh, circular chromosomes and they do not age. They could also live indefinitely forever. So most people don't know it, but the purpose of life is more life, better life, healthier life, longer life. And that is why life appeared to live, not to die. Life objective is to be alive and we have immortal animals we have immortal cells and the case of cancer is very important because cancer cells discovered how not to age and cancer didn't go to mit or to harvard or to oxford or to cambridge they just did this by mutation so if cancer discovered how not to age uh, scientists engineers we are going to discover what cancer did and we are going to do it but only better and for a good reason. Hmm. Yeah, it's almost like, you know, um, in evolution, uh, the kind of the goal of like evolution doesn't have like a clear purpose, like the purpose of evolution or, or, and natural selection needs to kind of, uh, yeah, like stay alive or <laughs> carry on the genes. And in a way, like you can think of the end goal of evolution is to escape that, you know, vicious cycle of being in nat natural selection. And the one way of doing that is to, you know, become this sort of immortal, like omnipotent <laughs> uh, being in a way. And uh, yeah, like, you know, there's w multiple ways of going about it. But um, for human species itself, yeah, like what, kind of fixing the aging or inc increasing the lifespan and the health span seems to be at least like the one of the kind of first steps uh, that we need to kind of take. 
Absolutely. But people need to understand that this is real, this is possible, this is science. And therefore, I don't talk if uh, if mortality is possible, but when it will be possible for us, for complete human bodies, because we know it is possible for cells. You have immortal cells, germ cells. You might have cancer cells. I hope not, but they are also immortal. So the proof that immortality is possible is that it already exists. It already exists. So we only need to understand how it happens, how it evolved, why it exists, so that we can replicate it in a better way. And this is the purpose of science and technology. And this is what is going to happen in the next two decades. Mm. Right. Um... Yeah, like, can you explain like what what is the kind of uh, in in the two decades like um, there's you know Ray Kurzweil calls it like the singularity event. Uh, can you maybe explain a little bit? Yes, sure. Actually, I am a very good friend of uh, Ray Kurzweil, and uh, I am excited that uh, he's coming out with his new book, "The Singularities Nearer." <laughs> nearer um, later this year in 2021 probably um, in September it will come out uh, it's the continuation of his 2005 book the singularity is near and he talks basically about two dates two very important dates 2029 and 2045 in 2029 two incredible things will happen hopefully one is we will pass the Alan Turing test and therefore, that means that you will not know if you are talking to a human or to a machine, because artificial intelligence will basically confuse you to make it believe that you are human. Uh, that is the first thing, together with longevity, escape, velocity, also sometimes called the Methuselarity, or the singularity of Methuselah, that was the biblical prophet who lived about a thousand years. So if we make it to 2029, 2030, we will basically live long enough to live forever. Because for every year we survive, we gain one extra year because life expectancy keeps on increasing. However, we are still aging until 2045 when we expect at the latest to have rejuvenation technologies. So that basically means we will be younger, not older, but younger. In 2045, first I plan to be alive. Death is not among my plans, so I hope to be alive. But two, in 2045, I plan to be younger than today, younger than today. In fact, when we look from 2045 to today, to the past of the future, we will remember how primitive we were today, we are today, that we let people die. We let people die and we don't cure them of aging. So anyway, that will be at the latest in 2045, we will reach the technological singularity, which is basically an artificial intelligence greater than all human intelligence and also we will reach immortality in the sense that we will be able to rejuvenate ourselves therefore even if you get there a little bit old no problem because we will have technologies to rejuvenate people and that is the objective to live indefinitely young not to live indefinitely old no one wants to be eternally old but we will have the possibility to live for as long as we want because this is not obligatory this is not mandatory if some people want to die please feel free to die that was reality until now so but we will have for the first time the possibility not only not to age and not to die if we don't want to but to live younger healthier fantastic lives in the future mm. yeah you just have to make sure that you reach that uh you know the uh bottleneck so to say because you can definitely like you know get hit by a car or uh, if there is like some sort of a war some nuclear war or something then uh, yes yeah, not gonna happen <laughs> yes absolutely that is why the word immortality is not totally correct mm. even though in biology people say immortal cells 
for cancer. Cancer are called biologically immortal by doctors. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, however, the word is not right because immortality can never, never be assured. If we have a boss that uh, kills us or even a comet, an asteroid that destroys uh, our city or our country or the whole planet, then we will die. But the objective is not to age and to reverse aging. And we know it is possible. Incredible advancements. Like, for example, the Nobel uh, Prize in Medicine in 2012 was given to a Japanese scientist uh, called Shinya Yamanaka, mm -hmm. who I visited him in the University of Kyoto. Uh, and uh, he discovered in 2006 that a few genes control the aging process of skin cells in mice. Six years later, he got the Nobel Prize. He discovered it in 2006. In 2012, he got the Nobel Prize. And many scientists are working on this, which is called cellular reprogramming and epigenetic reprogramming. And uh, as recently as December 2020, another famous biologist, David Sinclair, at Harvard, he discovered, uh, oh, actually even better, he, he took a, a mice, a little mouse mm -hmm. that was blind and he did cellular reprogramming on his eyes and the mice began seeing again. So you can turn back aging, you can give sight, you can give vision to mice that are blind and the same will happen with humans soon. This is beginning like normally in animal trials, in experiments with animals. When these technologies are sophisticated enough to be used on humans, they will be used on humans because we have plenty of humans who are also blind and right. that will be able to see again thanks to epigenetic reprogramming, cell reprogramming, and many other things, stem cell treatments, uh, other gene therapies, many new things that are being discovered and who did not exist one, two decades ago. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that, that can definitely like re relieve a lot of suffering in the world, uh, like regeneration. Uh, but uh, you mentioned like genetic reprogramming, so like aging, like aging is, um, you can think of it as a, like a genetic program because like everyone you know, if you're born, if you, you don't do anything, then you're still going to age eventually. Uh, but there's also like a lot of these epigenetic factors that contribute to that, like, you know, your lifestyle, your diet, your exercise routine, those are epigenetic factors that affect this uh, aging process. So well, uh, absolutely. Well, first of all, we need to understand among the multicellular organisms, like we are, we are multicellular, we have many, many cells, there are two types of cells, germ cells, for reproduction, and they do not age. They do not age. The same as bacteria that divide symmetrically, they do not age. Their only purpose was to live indefinitely. So that's the purpose of germ cells. But we are basically somatic cells. Soma comes from the Greek and it means body. So we are body cells, somatic cells that do age. They do age. So in our body, we have some cells that do not age and we have some cells that age. And I repeat, cancer cells discover how to stop aging. So we can stop aging. We will stop aging because it already happens in nature. So we just need to understand more. And this is... Uh, uh, growing very fast, all the knowledge, all the experience. And as I said, now we can turn back aging in the eyes of mice. We can give them vision again because we can um, uh, modify some genes. We can turn back this epigenetic clock. We can make them younger. And this mm. is the objective. But pe people need to know that this is possible. And I guarantee you that most of your viewers do not know that cancer cells are biologically immortal. I am very sure because 99% of the people uh, basically do not know it. And it was not learned yesterday or last year or even last decade. It was learned in 1951. Mm -hmm. So how is it possible that we know that cancer cells are immortal and that most people don't know it? 
or that we have immortal cells, germ cells, and people don't know it. So we just need to know that this is real, that immortality already exists. That is why it is possible, because it already happens in nature. Right. Yeah. So maybe like what are some specific examples of these uh, technologies? Um, you mentioned like CRISPR. Um, so yeah, like maybe explain a little bit about how it works and uh, yeah, what, what, are the, what are the like expectations? Yes, actually, um, my friend uh, Ray Kurzweil, he talks about three bridges to immortality, three major bridges. Bridge one was in the last decade, in the 2010s, when people are really beginning to understand that aging is a disease, but a curable disease, and that the first treatments are to do the things that your grandmother told you, which is eat well, do exercise, sleep well, don't drink too much, don't smoke, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Those are the bridge one technologies. Now we are entering in this second decade in the 2020s, the second bridge of biotechnology, the first biotechnology treatments. And there are many things happening now, like uh, self-reprogramming or epigenetic reprogramming that is just beginning, uh, CRISPR for uh, uh, gene modification. This is a new uh, technology. Actually, it got the Nobel Prize in 2020, uh, CRISPR technology that can help us to edit uh, genes, to change our chromosomes, to eliminate genetic diseases. But we have many other gene therapies. In fact, uh, the new vaccines, for uh, COVID-19, some of them are using incredible technologies that were unthinkable one decade ago, like using messenger RNA. This is a new technology that is being used. And in fact, the scientists who created these vaccines have a next target. After COVID-19, they are beginning to work on cancer, also on HIV AIDS and even malaria. So I am so excited, so happy that hopefully in one decade, we will be able with a vaccine using these new technologies to cure cancer, to cure HIV, to cure malaria. This is happening all exponentially, but more treatments, uh, stem cell therapies, the stem cells, uh, which also make all types of cells and they can uh, 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 reconstruct, rebuild your body are very important. And we see this also in small animals that grow back their legs or their tails like salamanders and all other reptiles. So we are learning a lot about regenerative uh, biology. So all of these are bridge to biotechnologies. Then we will reach bridge three, nanotechnologies. And basically we will be able to have nanobots, nanorobots in our body that will clean our body, that will keep it in good working condition, that we will, that they will eliminate cholesterol, for example, plagues in the arteries, in the veins. So these are the nanotechnology treatments. And then eventually we will get to the 2040s and hopefully mm -hmm. By 2045, at the latest, we will be immortal, or at least we will be able to stop aging and to rejuvenate people. Also, thanks to artificial intelligence. What artificial intelligence is doing is, is amazing. In 2020, artificial intelligence solved one of the biggest problems in biology, which is called protein folding. Protein folding was done by uh, an artificial intelligence created by Google's DeepMind. And this was a, a big, big problem because biologists didn't know how the proteins fold, how they change, how they move. And this was solved by an artificial intelligence. We humans, we could not do it because we have limited brains. But artificial intelligence can do things that we, we could not dream of before. So anyway, those are the three bridges. Bridge one, that... um we already know bridge two that is starting in the 2020s now and bridge three in the 2030s so i hope all of you make it to the 2030s because that will mean that you live long enough to live forever mm -hmm. yeah uh so but what are maybe like the biggest uh, pitfalls or biggest uh 
dangers to this uh, that uh, it's not going to happen or something you know doesn't work out like we thought we knew the answer or something we thought we we're heading in the right direction but it, it turns out to be like a dead end well i think um uh, this is scientifically possible. Uh, we just need more people to work about, uh, work on these issues. And companies, big companies are coming in, like Google. Google created a subsidiary called Calico, California Life Company. And they have put already billions of dollars. And many other companies are investing. Uh, Amazon, Apple, they are beginning to go into the health sector so that we go from uh, what we have now, which is sick care into real health care with a major target, only one major target at the center, which is aging. Aging is the major target. The problem is that people do not know this. As I mentioned, people do not know that cancer is biologically immortal, that cancer is a series of mutations that stop aging. And I repeat, this was discovered in 1951 and 99% of the people don't know it yet. Uh, probably 99.9% .9 of the people do not know about the Nobel Prize in Medicine in 2012 given to Shinya Yamanaka for discovering that four genes can turn back the aging clock and that since December 2020, uh, David Sinclair has been able to rejuvenate the eyes of mice. So People don't know it. So we need to communicate. And that is why I am writing books and I am giving talks so that people know what science is doing and what science will do. And um, in terms of public uh, outreach, um, um, advocacy so that people know about this, I organize many events, many conferences like the one here, uh, Transvision. Transvision conference is a conference about a vision of the future and how to transcend human limitations, how to become basically immortal, how to live longer, healthier lives. So I welcome you all to come to Madrid to learn about this um, new technologies in the famous Ateneo de Madrid. The Ateneo de Madrid is the most uh, famous, prestigious scientific and cultural institution. And it is celebrating now two centuries, 200 years. So in October, for the closing of the bicentennial, we will look back at the two last uh, centuries and we will discuss the next two centuries once we are basically immortal, super intelligent and super happy. Because the purpose of science and technology is to give us better lives, healthier lives, uh, longer lives uh, for everybody in a better world. And I am very optimistic, I am very positive. I think that the human condition is improving and we can see it, we are already living longer. Life expectancy today in Europe is at least 80 years on average. Uh, a century ago, it was only 40 years, 40 years. And at the time of the Roman Empire, life expectancy average was 20, 20 years. So we doubled from the time of the Roman Empire to last century, 40 years, and now to 80 years. And soon we will double it again and double it again. We are going to go into 160, 320 and live for as long as we want. But I repeat, young, the purpose is rejuvenation, regenerative medicine, to live indefinitely young and this will be possible well this is already possible we just need to apply this to us to humans hmm. so it seems like it's more of like a uh, almost like a investment thing or a finance thing that there isn't enough uh, let's say big big money flowing into this field yet sort of about the interest is kind of growing and so far it's been a lot of uh, behind yeah like the kind of general publicity and uh, money basically Yes, and also because there has not been enough research or researchers. To put this into context, uh, 20 years ago, there might have been 10 scientists, only 10 scientists working on rejuvenation technologies because it was a crazy idea, a crazy field. Um, last decade, maybe it has grown to 100. This decade is probably... Um, 
thousands and next decade it will be millions of people also there are uh, more companies are understanding that this is happening and also foundations uh very soon uh in the middle east uh, a new foundation is being created that will announce that will invest one billion dollars on research on aging and anti-aging one billion dollars per year um, and this is one of many foundations that will come out in the next uh, few years and many companies there are many startups uh, working on um, longevity right now so the field is growing exponentially from 10 people 100 people a thousand people 10,000 people and hundreds of thousands and millions of people soon because aging causes the biggest suffering for humanity mm. over two-thirds of people in the world die of aging and age-related diseases people today uh, do not die of a uh, uh, malaria even though people die of malaria and people die of uh, hiv aids they are very small compared to aging or covid covid is very small uh, last year 60 million people died in the planet 60 million out of those 60 million 2 million people died of uh, covid for example but 40 million people died of age related diseases the most uh, common age related diseases are heart problems uh, like uh, a heart attack uh, cardiovascular problems or related then uh, cancer cancer is is bad and all uh, cells eventually can have cancer and i repeat what is beautiful or sadly beautiful is that cancer makes those cells immortal they stop aging it's like cells when they age they don't want to age so they mutate to stop aging but that is bad for the overall body at the end anyway so heart trouble cancer and dementia many different types of dementia like uh, alzheimer's uh, including maybe even parkinson's or other uh, diseases like diabetes so uh, two-thirds of the people in the planet are 90 percent of the people in europe die of age related diseases we do not die of wars we do not die of climate change we do not die of malaria um even if some people die of all of those reasons because we do die of those reasons but percentage wise 90 percent of europeans die of age related diseases so the number one enemy the common enemy of the world is aging aging causes the most suffering in the planet and also let me remind you that in the declaration of human rights the number one right is the right to life and to everybody not only to young people or middle-aged people but also older people this is the number one right and i would say it's the only right because if you don't have life you don't have other rights there is no other right if you are dead so this is the number one right the right to life and the number one necessity and aging is the number one enemy of humanity so curing aging is not only scientifically possible but it is the number one moral duty of humanity today more important than anything else more important because i repeat 90 percent of europeans die of aging they don't die of other things of aging yeah yeah uh, and it's uh almost like a huge uh, burden on the economy so to say like the a lot of resources are wasted on uh, fixing uh, or like you know uh, coping with uh, these uh, comorbidities and uh, things and uh, the older population is less productive whereas you know the younger population is also able to if you're like younger for longer uh, then you're also able to contribute to the economy for more and uh, yeah actually like the general wealth wealth of the kind of society tends to increase uh, with the result of this yes Sim, this is a very important point that you are making because if we look at health costs and I repeat, we don't have health care, we have sick care. But 80% uh, of the medical uh, costs are in the last five years of life of people, and people still die. Okay, mm -hmm. after you use 80% of all the medical money, people still die. So the idea is to flip it around so that people don't age at the beginning. That is the objective, so that we don't waste money 
for people who sadly eventually die anyway, but that people do not age. And we know this is possible. So actually, medical costs will decrease, decrease, decrease when people don't age. Not only medical costs will decrease, but we will be more productive, as you said. We will be living healthy, long lives, productive lives. And so now we are beginning to talk about the longevity dividend. There is a positive economic dividend of not aging because not only we can do more, we can be productive. There are no uh, cause for diseases because we will stop diseases, including the mother of all diseases aging. And therefore, there will be no huge medical cause at the end. Two examples, chemotherapy and radiotherapy. These are primitive medicines that should be banned and i hope they will be banned in 10 years once we can cure cancer because uh, radiotherapy and chemotherapy basically is like trying to uh, kill a little mosquito with a canyon yeah. you know we <laughs> we hit the whole body just to kill a little cancer okay so we will have technologies to kill cancer cells precisely where they are without killing the rest of the body so Radiotherapy is a barbaric technology. And in 20 years, we will remember how barbaric we were today, even in terms of medicine. We know so little today, but we are learning so much. And we need to know that we are going to learn much more. This is growing exponentially. So much that I believe this will be the largest industry in the world in two decades, a rejuvenation longevity industry. Let me give you an example also. 20 years ago, the biggest industry in the world was the energy uh, industry, the energy sector, big companies uh, in Russia, in uh, the USA, in Europe, Exxon, British Petroleum, Shell, those were the largest company in the planet. Today, the largest companies are um, information technology companies. We have uh, Google, Apple, Facebook, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. In two decades, the largest companies will be health-related companies or companies that change, like uh, Google, who wants to go into medicine, or Amazon or Apple. They are all entering into health, and uh, I wonder why. And why? Mm -hmm. Because it is very profitable, and it will be the largest industry in the planet because everybody wants to be healthy. Mm. Yeah, what about like overpopulation? Like if everyone is going to live forever, like what's going to happen to, you know, being crowded? Well, uh, actually, sadly, the opposite is true. Um, many advanced countries, the population is declining. The population of Russia has been declining now for several years. The population of Japan uh, has been declining for almost two decades. Actually, uh, China, China is expected to lose 700 million people, 700 wow. million people by the end of the century. Wow. The population of um, Germany is declining, Italy is declining. In many advanced uh, countries, it is declining. But um, anyway, this has always been a worry. Uh, Malthus, who was a British economist two centuries ago, he said that the world was overpopulated, that there were too many people that London at the time had 1 million people and England had 10 million people. And Malto said this was the end. It, it was the end of England. 10 million people, too many, London, 1 million overpopulated. It's the end and the end of humanity. Humanity was reaching 1 billion people, too many people. Uh, but what happened? Just the opposite. People not only come with a mouth, we come with a mouth and a behind, an ass, but we come with a brain. The brain is the most complex structure in the known universe. So we actually need more brains, not less brains, more brains. The brain produces more than when the mouth eats. Okay, so why has humanity advanced so much from this disaster of Malthus two centuries ago? If we have grown wealthier, richer, healthier, because we have more people. 
people are good, people are not bad. So the tragedy today is that the population is stabilizing and soon will begin declining in many more countries. That is the real problem. It's not that we have more brains, it's that we have less brains. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the more people you have, then there's a higher likelihood of having like an Einstein in that population <laughs> compared to a small population that only has like a thousand people. Absolutely, absolutely. But also now we are all interconnected. We learn from each other uh, very quick uh, through internet and other uh, telecommunication possibilities. So uh, we live in incredible times. I am actually so excited um, because we, uh, we will reach human intelligence level with artificial intelligence and improve our human condition. And um, also, we will live longer and healthier lives, and we will colonize other planets. Uh, this year, 2020, is fantastic. For the first time in human history, three different nations are, uh, are on Mars. The United Arab Emirates, for the first time, um, China, and the USA. And uh, next year, three uh, more zones from Russia from the European Union, and maybe India are also going to Mars, and we will return to the moon as well. So uh, we live in incredible times. We have to be positive and believe in ourselves, believe in our brains, believe in humanity. Our goal is to transcend, to have a vision of the future, which is why my conference, the Transhumanist Conference, is called Transvision. How are we going to transcend? How are we going to create a vision for a better future for all of humanity, both here on planet Earth and beyond planet Earth? Because now, for the first time, as famous entrepreneur Elon Musk says, that um, we are becoming we are going from single planetary civilization to multiple planetary civilization. And this will guarantee that humanity continues and it evolves and it goes to the rest of the solar system. Mm. Yeah, it's almost like something uh, kind of required for the kind of survival and sustenance of our species. Like if we, if we were to stay on Earth, then uh, yeah, like we actually will eventually you know, die because of some natural disaster or... Um, like an asteroid impact or something else. So it's kind of very dangerous for us to be here <laughs> or try to be here. Uh, the, the goal should be to kind of uh, at least have like a second base, uh, like a backup plan. Yes, absolutely. Uh, that is what uh, Elon Musk and other people say. Uh, but talking uh, about longevity as well, um, as I explained to you, uh, bacteria evolved to live, not to die. And we might find bacteria on Mars or eventually on another planet where there is life, but there is no death, no death. Because if we find this uh, bacteria like here on planet Earth that don't have death in their genes, to put it that way, there could be a planet, really beautiful planet with life, but no death. And this should be one of our goals on a space exploration, to find life on other planets and not to find death. Hmm. Yeah, uh, but like when it comes to these technologies, like uh, is it something that you have to kind of keep on doing? So like, is it like regeneration that you get old, but then you regenerate, but you still get old, so you have to regenerate again, or is it something that you reach this? Yeah, like a yeah, like an immortal state, like the uh, where you don't where you don't where you don't experience this uh, aging phenomenon. Uh, like, which one is it? Like, you have to do, would you have to be constantly like regenerating yourself? Uh, in the future or do you reach the state of your you know zero like you're not, not almost like in a vacuum that you don't age <laughs> well first of all um to finish with elon musk uh, uh he also says that we will be able uh to uh live much much longer and probably become immortal so i think that will be his next uh plan his next company and he does everything you know elon musk is into so many areas he said in Berlin in December 2020, when he received uh, a prize from um, um, Germany, that uh, longevity and indefinite life spans were possible. So I think we will be working about that. But your question, if it is one treatment or if it is continuous treatments, I will tell you what already happens in nature, what we know. I mentioned cancer cells. Cancer cells, they just have one treatment. 
once they mutated and they know how not to age, that's it. They don't have to do it all the time. Or germ cells, you have germ cells in your body. They don't age ever. They don't age. You age because you are 99% somatic cells and somatic cells age. So you are aging, but your germ cells do not age. Never, never. They don't age and they, they don't have continuous treatment. So uh, it depends on what we do or also going back to bacteria, bacteria that have circular chromosomes with no beginning and no end. They basically have no telomeres because there is no beginning and end to their chromosomes. Those uh, bacteria also don't age. So there are bacteria, as I said, uh, that are biologically immortal. And we hope to find them in other planets as well. A planet with life, but no death. And no treatments, no treatments, because life appeared to live, to be alive, not to die. That was uh, a later happening, actually, because of sex. Uh, sex was very important in evolutionary terms. When single cells joined to create multicellular organisms and sex appeared, then it gave uh, a lot of more evolution possibilities because you could exchange genetic material. But then only the germ cells became immortal. So with multicellular organisms like us and with sex, which is good, uh, but also aging came. So uh, we will, uh, no problem, we will not get rid of sex, just the opposite. <laughs> we will probably have more sex without aging. This is the objective. So anyway, many things are being uh, tried. Some people eventually say that for the whole body, we could have an injection or we could have a pill. Uh, we don't know. And to tell you the truth, I don't care. I am an engineer. I know this is possible. I don't know how we are going to make it there, but we are going to. We are right. going to. We are discovering why cancer cells do not age. It is a matter of time. I want people to understand that this is not just possible. It is only a matter of time. So we need indeed more money and we need more brains more brains thinking about this researching this it is only a matter of time hopefully uh, in two decades but maybe in one decade you know maybe this new type of vaccines will eliminate cancer but not only eliminate cancer but understand how cancer appears how cancer evolves and use this for the good cells not for the bad cells, for cancer, but for all the good cells in the body. So long uh, uh, answer to your short question. Uh, we don't know, and uh, I don't really care. We just need to do more research. This is science and technology. We learn by making mistakes, and um, we will discover it. We will discover it, and I hope very soon. And uh, Looking at biology, as I said, there are many different types of examples of cells that do not age, small organisms that do not age. Obviously, we are different. We have to see how this would apply to humans and also how we are going to evolve because we are not the end of evolution. That is another thing we need to have clear in our minds. We need to continue evolving and we need to evolve also to go to other planets. If we go to Mars, Mars has only a third of the gravity that planet Earth. So we need to change our bodies uh, to be on Mars. Also, we might not be breathing the same atmosphere. So we might need to have many, many changes right. like a uh, fish. Fish live in water, okay? And then we live on land. We cannot live on water. We cannot live on planet Mars as we are. Anyway, we will evolve and we will become immortal or amortal, no mortality. Not immortality, but amortality, no mortality, because death will always be around. And right. there will be, sadly, accidents, homicides, and suicides, sadly. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you can't really escape it uh, completely unless unless you maybe learn how to like bring back the dead or something. <laughs> uh, yes, and uh, and also make copies of yourself, which might be possible as well. We know we can clone the body, and we know we can soon read your mind and copy your mind. Uh, one of the companies by Elon Musk, Neural Link, 
is uh, talking about connecting our brain to the cloud, to internet. And then we will be able to communicate through the internet and even copy our brains if we want to. Mm, yeah, that's uh, also like an almost different kind of uh, field uh, in terms of like, uh, it goes into a lot of philosophy and uh, like what is the mind and what is consciousness? <laughs> Absolutely. And there are two types of immortality. Normally I talk about the hardware immortality, biological immortality of our bodies, but there is also software immortality. If we copy our mind, if we copy our brain, so that we also might not need a body in the future. Right. And it might be better to be on Mars without a human body. It could be a robotic body or a cyborg body. We don't know, but we mm -hmm. will discover this is happening now while we talk. I mean, this is so exciting. This is the best time to be alive, not only because our life expectancy has doubled from last century, which has doubled from the time of the Roman Empire, and it will double in the next two decades as well, but also we are learning so much and uh, we live between the last mortal generation and the first immortal generation. This is deep. We need to think about this. We are part of the last humans who might die, but also part of the first humans who might live indefinitely young and healthy. Mm, yeah. So we'll just have to wait, <laughs> wait and see. Uh, but what about the costs? Like, um, what is going to be like the ac accessibility to these technologies? Well, this will be for everybody free. And I'll give you some quick answers. Why will it be free? Well, first, because we talked about the longevity dividend. 80% of the medical costs are in the last five years of life and anyway people die. So you could say sadly that that money is maybe even wasted because people die at the end. If we put that 80% of the cost so that people do not age, then we don't have the diseases. We don't have aging. We don't have heart attacks. We don't have cancer. We don't have Alzheimer's. We don't have Parkinson's, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So basically uh, with the same money, but just put at a different time, not when you die, but when you are young so that you don't age. So number one, number two, we normally think we are very complex and complicated. We are not. We are basically water bags. We are 70% water. And you know, you are not Evian water, Perrier water. You are tap water. 70% of you, you are tap water. And water is hydrogen, the most abundant element in the universe with a little bit of oxygen. So 70% of us is water. And then the other five elements are the most available cheap elements on the planet. Uh, we have carbon, we have nitrogen, uh, we have potassium, etc. We are very cheap to make. In fact, we are so cheap to make that our parents made us in one night. <laughs> and, and it was not expensive. Huh? Not only was not expensive, we chemically do not cost a hundred euros. We mm. are not a mm. hundred euros of raw material. We are not. We are just 70% tap water, water, and then 30% of cheap material. So why am I saying all of this? Because something that is cheap, once we get to the nanotechnology level, the revolution of nanotechnology in the 2030s, we will be able to repair and to change, to modify, to improve very cheaply because we are cheap. We are just, I repeat, water plus carbon plus nitrogen. We are so cheap that we are not a hundred euros in raw materials. Therefore, to keep something cheap will be cheap in the future. We are not uh, expensive airplanes made with uh, steel, aluminum, and many other components. We are not made of uh, uranium. We don't have diamonds. We don't have gold. Uh, we are water plus carbon. We are cheap. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, if you like explain it that way, then it does kind of make make sense in that way. And you also mentioned uh, in the conference on, in your speech that. Um, once people, the public knows about this, then they're also going to start to demand it. So, so that, you know, the uh, authorities are kind of almost uh, forced to uh, make it more accessible and uh, cheaper for like everyone. 
Well, and let's talk about COVID-19 as an example. You know, COVID-19, which is a small pandemic, a small pandemic. Um, let me remind you of the Spanish flu, which was not a Spanish, by the way. <laughs> the Spanish flu of one century ago, it killed between 50 million people, 50 million people and 100 million people when the population of the planet was only 2 billion, 2 billion. And maybe a hundred million died of the Spanish flu. Today, COVID might kill three to four million people uh, of a population of close to eight billion people. However, why do I say all of this? Not because of the death, which are very tragic. Even one death is tragic. Two million, four million is even more tragic. But the point is that if the world was paralyzed because of COVID and all governments are saying that they are going to give the vaccines to everybody, and this will happen in, in one year, two years maximum for the whole planet. And it has cost about, the estimate now is close to 20 trillion US dollars, 20 trillion US dollars is costing the COVID-19 crisis. And if COVID is a small pandemic compared to the real pandemic, which is aging, imagine what people are going to demand. Once people know that we can stop aging and we are going to reverse aging, it is totally unstoppable. There can be no politician that they will not give the treatment to people. And I repeat, it's going to be very cheap. It will be eventually free and available to everybody who wants it. The problem is that not everybody will want it. Some people will want to age because they say, oh, my parents age. It was natural, so I want to age. That is okay. If they want to age and die, they can die. Even like today, some people don't want the vaccine. If they don't want the vaccine because they, they think they are going to, to get infected by other things so that there will be a microchip or a nanobot into their body, etc. Well, that's their choice. You cannot force them. Uh, what you have to do is to educate people about science and technology. That is the main thing. But uh, going back to your question, this is unstoppable, unstoppable. Once we have treatments to stop aging and to cure aging, this is absolutely unstoppable and it will be available to everybody in the whole planet, in the whole planet, and even on planet Mars, if we are already living on Mars by the time. Hmm. Yeah, you, you do uh, have like a lot of uh, belief in this and excited about it. So yeah, with just, yeah, I do agree that there's a need to be more like, um, uh, yeah, like research and more uh, finance investment into this uh, field. Because like, even if we don't, even if we don't uh, like uh, reach this immortality by 2045, then just the mere fact of researching about the aging process itself is going to like at least help us to maybe uh, like you know improve upon the treatments of cancer or com fix it completely treat it completely uh, and uh, yeah like uh, the kind of byproducts of even if we like don't reach the you know first place if you get to second or third place then i think the kind of benefits are still worth it a whole lot sure and again uh, this is unstoppable and in fact uh I was also uh, briefly in politics in Spain. I ran for the elections to the European Parliament, the last elections in May 2019, um, over a year ago. And then I got uh, 7,000 votes uh, here in my home city of Madrid, which is not bad, uh, for talking that we can stop aging and rejuvenate uh, people and other things, obviously. But that was one of my main campaign items so more people in the future will talk about this and this is to me unstoppable really unstoppable uh, i want more people to know the experiment of david sinclair for example in biology it was actually at the cover of the i think it was nature magazine of december 2020 uh, it's incredible we can give vision to blind mice we will do this soon to humans my hope is that maybe one, two, at the latest three years, we will give vision back to blind people. Once people see it, and they see it, especially if they were blind and now they can see, they see this is real, that this is possible, that this is happening. And not just with mice, but with humans, 
to me, this is absolutely unstoppable. And if a politician says that this is too expensive, he will be out of a job in politics very soon, very soon, because there will be another politician that will offer it for free. And I repeat, I think it will be soon for free, for free, like the COVID vaccines, COVID vaccines, which are bad anyway, compared to what we are going to have. You know, uh, it's exciting. The COVID vaccines are the, the, the best vaccines developed only uh, in one year. Actually, the story is so fascinating. Let me tell you quickly. The COVID uh, virus was sequenced in 11 days, 11 days in China. It was sent through internet to different labs, like the Moderna labs in Boston, Massachusetts, in the USA. And then with the electronic sequence of the virus, in two days, they developed the first vaccine. This is incredible. 11 days to sequence the genome of the virus, 48 hours, two days to create the first vaccine. The, the Pfizer, the BioNTech uh, vaccine in Germany was also done in days, in days. The problem later was the human trials, but even that will be faster in the future because we are learning so much and artificial intelligence will help us as well. It will help us to tell what is the body reaction? What will the body reaction be to different vaccines? So anyway, uh, this is also truly exciting. And I'd like to say this will be the last pandemic in human history, the last pandemic because of how much we have learned through this human tragedy, which I repeat is nothing compared to the real tragedy, which is aging and death. That is the real human tragedy. 90% of Europeans, 60 six percent of everybody in the world die of aging even in the poor countries in africa over 50 percent of the people die of aging today aging is the biggest problem problem even in the poorest countries in the world no country today no country has a, a life expectancy of less than 50 years 50 years even though a hundred years ago, the average was 40 for the world. Today, even the poorest places in the world have life expectancy of 50. And people die of aging in those countries too. So we should focus after COVID into aging. Aging is the real disease, is the real pandemic. And we know today we can cure it. And we should cure it because it is the moral obligation of humanity to preserve their number one human right, the right to life. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, yeah, like uh, exciting times, uh, at least like so some new, new, new things to look out for. Uh, but yeah, um, before I ask my last question, uh, where can people learn more about your work? Where can they get the book? And where can they maybe you know find you online? Um, well, as everything now, you can uh, search for my name in internet. I appear in many places. If you uh, if you type also the death of death, my name will come out. I have a fantastic co-author, David Good, who is from um, Britain, from the United Kingdom. So we wrote this book together three, two years ago. But anyway, um, I am a public figure. As I mentioned, I was candidate to the European Parliament. I have uh, many other books, not just this book. And I am working on four more books for the future as well. The continuation of the death of death will be called the life of life, the life of life, because we are going to have more life, better life, happier life, um, beautiful future. I am really excited. This is the best time to be alive. So keep alive for the next decade so that you reach longevity, escape velocity, the methuselarity. In your case, it should not be a problem because you are young enough. But even for people who are in their 40s or 50s today, I think they should be able to make it. So just Google the death of death. Uh, we have to work on this. And please come to the conference I am organizing in Madrid, which is not any conference and it is not in any place. It will be in the most beautiful place in Madrid that is celebrating 200 years. Ateneo de Madrid for the Transvision Conference and meet all the great futurists, all the great immortalists, 
all the great uh, transhumanists. Uh, we have uh, many of the scientists all the way from Aubrey de Grey, Joao Pedro de Magallanes, and, and also philosophers, uh, Max Moore, Natasha Vita Moore, uh, Anders Sandberg, many, many top uh, scientists, um, visionaries working to improve the human condition and to live long enough to live forever. In fact, uh, uh, Ray Kurzweil will be opening the conference uh, talking about his new book, The Singularities Nearer. The Singularities mm. Nearer. Awesome. Well, yeah, we'll put all the links in the show notes. And my last question is, uh, what's this one piece of advice or habit that you wish you adopted sooner? Um, well, that's a hard question. I could say, you know, I would have liked to be born later. <laughs> <laughs> But that obviously was not my choice. Um, so my choice is to keep on learning, to keep on sharing, to keep on loving. The human experience is fantastic, but it is only going to get better. So mm. this is the thing I love. It is only going to get better. So I don't know. Life is beautiful. Good question. No good answer. But the future <laughs> will tell us, will tell us. Yeah. Well, yeah, thanks for coming to the show. And yeah, it was a really exciting to talk with you and yeah like uh, looking forward to what 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 the future brings in terms of just the species uh, as a general fantastic and i always say live long and prosper <laughs>